gospel makes people healthy. The gospel makes people beautiful. The gospel makes people creative. The gospel makes people terrific. The gospel makes people dynamic. Gospel Fest of Gospel Miracles. Tonight, beautiful, beautiful words from God written that we live and experience. Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Hey, that's not all we do. We preach it and we demonstrate it. Gospel fest of gospel. What's that fancy word? Dynamics. Yeah. Gospel fest of gospel dynamics for people. Not for the organization. Not for the name of the church. Not to make us pat ourselves on the back. But for people. What I know about the gospel is for me. And me is people. And what's in me, I want to give to everybody else. I can give what I have. If I have received it, I can share it. Say me too. Chapter 11 of Matthew. They came and said, are you the Christ? Or should we look for someone else? Are you the one that should come? Or do we need to keep looking for another? And Jesus said, he said, John will catch on and he will have his own answer if you tell him this. Go tell him. What you have heard, go tell him the message that you've heard preached. And go tell him the miracles that you've seen performed. And John will know if I am the Christ or not. By their fruits, you shall know them. And they went and told him, the blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Poor. We always think of financially poor. I really don't think it means that. I think anybody that doesn't know Jesus is in poverty. Everybody outside of the gospel is poor. We don't need to rate people according to their economic status. Outside of Christ, they're in need. They're starving. They're hungry. They're poor. They're naked. They have nothing to clothe them with righteousness. They are poor. We are sent to them. Not just the materially poor. All people, like the sick. I never cease to marvel at some, I hear preachers, and they'll tell, and they'll preach it. They'll tell the people, God has anointed me uh, to pray for people with diabetes. And wherever they go, they call for all the people with diabetes and pray for them, and God heals them. And they uh, figure that they need to shy around the others because the anointing might not be as heavy, you know, because they're really called to help the folks with diabetes. I've seen folks uh, get that idea about lots of different things. You know, that, that doesn't match gospel. That does not match gospel. Don't ever feed me that. Never, never. There's not a place in the Bible that anybody was anointed of God to run out and heal a little certain group of people. No, don't go for that nonsense. Jesus is a healer. Jesus lives in us. He heals all sicknesses. That's gospel. You believe it? All kinds of people heal. You want some more good stuff? An interesting verse in Mark. Did you ever notice Mark's gospel, the way he opened it up? This is the way it starts. 
Let me read it to you as a, remind, as a reminder. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How about that? That's the way he started his report. This is the beginning of the gospel. And I couldn't help but think about Acts 1 and 1 of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Hallelujah. And I always read that say, and that's of all we continue to do and teach. So the gospel began with Jesus and continues in us. The same gospel. Is another gospel at work in you? There is no other gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ like this, God sent a messenger to say, get ready, good news is coming and wonderful things can happen and you can have your sins forgiven. That's the way it started. God sent a messenger to prepare the way of the Lord so people could have life. That's gospel. That's what I am, the continuation of the gospel. I am a messenger going everywhere, telling people how they can tune in and get ready. The Lord's coming to them. And they receive him everywhere I go. This comes into them. And they get saved. And they get healed. What about you? Gospel fest of gospel dynamics. Dynamics, I'm coming to them. This is the scripture reading. The beginning of the gospel. Say, I'm the continuation of the gospel. Because I am following Christ. He was gospel embodied. Me too. I keep it going. And as long as I am alive, there will be gospel according to me. Hallelujah. Jesus alive in me. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, go to Luke chapter four. I love this verse. The spirit of the Lord God is, are you listening? Is, verse 18, is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news. I am Holy Ghost anointed for one purpose. To preach gospel. To bring deliverance. To release captives. To give blind people sight. To heal broken hearts. I am anointed for that purpose. I wish Pentecost taught that. Instead of teaching that we're anointed to speak in tongues. I like to speak in tongues. But if that's all I got out of it, I would give it up as a bad deal. I got more than that. I am anointed for a purpose. Number one. Preach the gospel. How can you preach gospel if you don't believe gospel? How can you preach good news if you don't believe good news? How can you preach good news if your ear is hungry for bad news? How can you preach good news if you love to take in bad news? You gotta shut out the bad news. There's good news in this world. That's why Norman Vincent Peale said he always reads the sport page instead of the first page of the newspaper. He said, I get tired of the bad news. I go to the sport page and I read about winners. <laughs> Isn't that better? Well, you got to do something to keep a cheer in your life. We're good news people. If we're going to drink from the fountain of bad stuff all the time, how are we going to come out and be ministers and feed the world good news? No, you give out what you're full of. How you doing? Well, that's what I'm anointed for. Chapter 9 of Luke. He called his 12 
And I don't pay much attention to that 12. I say, me too. I just wasn't there then. I came later. But he gives the same call to everybody. You believe that? That doesn't offend your religious, your religion. No, okay, good. He called his followers, I like that, and gave them. Say, that's for me too. I wasn't there, but what he gave them, he's got to give to me. Otherwise, he wouldn't think I'm as valuable as they were. And I know that's not true because they forsook him and I didn't. Hallelujah. So I know what he gave them <laughs> is for me too. Glory to God. And he called his 12 disciples together and gave them. Now I believe this. Power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. We are walking healers. We always have to keep in mind, healing is not only physical. We are healers. Physical healings, sure, they come. Marvelous. But the real healing takes place inside the person. That's why all over the world, practically all of our crusades, after a few nights, after about a week, it begins to be that you can't finish a sermon without people getting healed, interrupting, raising up wheelchairs or beds or cots or crutches or canes, consistently, always, all over the world, it always happens. After you're there a while, they begin to catch on to the gospel. And the gospel we preach is a healing gospel. And the people repent of their sins and change their ways and learn that God is good and find out about Jesus and how wonderful he is. And they come to him and they believe on him. Healing of the inner spirits of the people. Setting them straight in their minds. Getting them birthed out of their old religious and oft times pagan philosophies and getting them to understand the story of the gospel, creation, redemption, and now. You don't preach the gospel until you preach those three. Creation, God's design. Redemption, God's restoration of his design. And now, the proof of his design in our generation. Who wants to blow about blind Bartimaeus in the Bible? The blind man sitting there in India or Africa, he's not or she's not interested in you telling about Bartimaeus in the Bible. They want to know about Simeon out there near Nakuru that was born without eyes that now has eyes. They hear about that, they say, wow. Who wants to know about the leper healed in Galilee? Wonderful, but maybe that was fate. Maybe that was just a story. You know, I'm talking about the people of the world. Maybe, maybe that's just a religious fable. But when Mir Miriam Gotti comes to the market walking instead of crawling, and her leprosy is gone, and she's healed, then, no wonder the district commissioner writes and says, Brother and Sister Osborne, the Nyanza province believes in Jesus Christ because they've seen the proof in Midian. Gotti, our own friend, our own leper, in our own city, she's now healed. The district commissioner writes us a letter like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. The gospel. Gospel. Gospel fest of gospel dynamics. I give you power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. We are walking healers. Run with us, we'll do you good. Get around us, what we got will get off on you. You bet. We can heal anything. Hallelujah. It's not us. It's the gospel, it's the truth, it's the framework of truth that we present to people. It's the good news we have that God don't carry a club. 
that God is interested in the welfare of people. That's good news. Our world don't know that. They haven't heard that. They haven't been exposed to that. Religion always scares people so it can collect from people for providing a little safety. Religion would go broke if it didn't have guilt. Religion doesn't, doesn't save people. Religion from their sins. Religion manipulates people through their sins and collect for it every Sunday. And we'll give you a little more forgiveness. If you bring the right offering and you follow the right ritual, then we'll give you enough to last not long, just a week, because we want to collect some more next week. We got to do it to pay our bills. That's religion. But Jesus redeems us from our sins, delivers us, heals us, heals us, heals us from all of our sins and makes us new creatures and we're free. And then we come back because we worship. Hallelujah. And we're bonded with people of like faith and we get with them and we sing and we hold hands and we dance together and we rejoice together and we read the word together and a pastor feeds us and we grow and we go out and what we've got gets off on everybody that we touch. I don't believe anybody can touch me or contact me without it having been destiny at work. I am so important. Why brag about the apostles and Jesus in the Bible and everybody that touched them, how wonderful it was? What about you? The same Jesus in you, he lives in your flesh now. Wherever you go is a path of destiny at work. Oh, I think the world's so lucky to have me running around free. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm glad about that. Are you? Gospel, gospel, gospel fest of gospel dynamics. We're dynamic, all right. Well, he give them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. That's our equipment. Now he said, he sent them to preach. We get to it in a minute. The kingdom of God and to heal sicknesses. Did you hear that? Did I read that? Is that in your Bible? Are you sure that's in your Bible? He sent them what? To preach the kingdom of God, the reign of God through Jesus. I won't go into that. And to heal the sick. That don't just mean physically sick people. That means go straighten out their thinking. Go untangle them from the complexities of frightening religion. From superstition. Heal their thinking. Heal them. Give them new life. And so verse 6 said, they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel. Whether you say preaching the kingdom or preaching the gospel, it's the same thing. The gospel of the kingdom is what Jesus preached in Mark 1, 14. Same thing. Was that all they did? What did your Bible say right after that? What? What? Where? Wow. Anywhere we go, we're healers. Everywhere we go, we're healers. I believe that. That is is the bomb, the salvation, the cure for any community. We're it. Oh, International Gospel Center, beautiful people, and you, there by video, you, a healer. When you receive healing, you can give healing. Any more? Yeah, lots more. Okay, I better skip some of that other. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some more later. Later. <clears throat> Dynamics. Number one, peace. I said, discover, number one, discover peace 
with God. Number two, love. Believe in God's love power. Dynamics. Vigor. Energy. Power. What makes you productive, effective? The opposite of static. Weight with no motion and no effect. Dynamic, energized. You, gospel dynamics. It cannot begin until you can sing, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. I sing that and I weep when I sing that, my dear, because it is well with my soul. Not because of what I have done, but because of what he has done. Now, having discovered that Jesus suffered enough to pay for me, then I come to the second dynamic and I must learn to believe in God's love power. It is his suffering for me that made it possible for me to have peace. I'm born into this family. I have no sin left against, charged against me. The righteousness of Jesus is imputed to me. And I am happy. I'm tranquil. I'm at home in the family of God. Getting into this family, I discover the marvel of this family. And I hear of the wonders because coming into this family, I begin to pick up rumors of other people that came from backgrounds like me or worse. And they too were brought in. And even though they had done more terrible things than I'd ever done, they have peace too. And then I begin to weigh it up and I hear different ones talking about God's power and I hear then religion begins to bear on me and they begin to make me kind of scared of God but I search and I stick with the gospel and I discover, yeah, he's powerful, mighty, but his power is love power. That helps me in my new life. That's the dynamic that I need to feed me, nourish me in this gospel way so that I can have energy to heal people. Power without love. Many people in the church are ex trying to exercise power without love and many times it comes across as rather brutal and hurts people and beats people down. But oh, listen, I'm talking a gospel fest of gospel dynamics. The dynamic that is vital for us to energize us to do the work of the ministry and to live the life that Jesus wants us to is to understand the only power God has is love power and to believe in his love. I'd like to encourage everybody to read, to get this and hang it up and memorize it, the love plan. I relate myself to God's big love plan. He created me to share his lifestyle. I know his original plan was for happiness and health without inferiority, like Adam and Eve had. But they disregarded his word. That was the origin of human problems. Then God's big love plan saved me. Jesus assumed my wrongs, died in my place, then returned to offer me God's new life. I relate myself to him because since he endured my penalty in my name, I am able to receive new life 
and to be restored as though I never committed sin. It was love's idea not to let me die in emptiness, but to pay for my wrong and to restore me to God's lifestyle. Now, I am at home with God. He blesses me with life's best through Jesus Christ. I have regained dignity. The love plan has succeeded. Do you buy that? Do you commit to that? Love, the dynamic that can change our lives. Listen. God commendeth his love toward us. Say, that's me. In that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Now that's how God showed he loved me. Listen, get it out of your head that you decided to follow Jesus. He decided to follow you until he got you. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how God expresses his love to you. While you were yet a sinner, Jesus died for you. Well, wow. So, since that's so, when I didn't even care, he loved me so much that he paid for all my sins. Wow. Then, being now justified by his blood, You know, justified. I never forget to throw that in, Brother Monk. Just as if I'd never done it. Justified. Being now made just as if I'd never done it. And that's exactly the way I am. That's why I have peace. And all is well with my soul. Being justified by his blood. I'll be saved from all wrath through him. I don't have any worries. For if, when I was an enemy, I was reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that I'm reconciled, I'm saved by his life living in me. It's well with my soul. And not only so, but I joy in God through my Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I have now received the reconciliation or redemption of all of my sins. It's fixed. It's well with my soul. His love did it. Now, listen to it in this other version. God showed his great love for me by sending Christ to die for me, while I was still a sinner. Since by his blood he did all this for me as a sinner, how much more will he do for me now that he's declared me not guilty anymore? He declared me not guilty. That's why you don't need to pray and beg and moan and cry and wrestle until you feel real good. That's believing in your own emotion. He has paid the price and wrestled and suffered the agony of our sins and rose from the dead and said, hey, if you believe on me, you're not guilty anymore. I paid for it. Like he came back from our prison with our account stamped paid in full and handed us the paper, said you can walk out, baby. You believe that? Now he will save us from all of God's wrath to come. And since when we were enemies, we were brought back to God by the death of his son, what blessings he has for us now that we are his friends and he is living within us. I absolutely believe that. That's my message to the world. I preach that all over the world. I convince people of that by the power of the Holy Ghost that anoints me. People get convinced of that and they're birthed into a new, beautiful lifestyle. Now, we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins.
us the friends of God. Thank God. Ephesians 2. God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I never talk about love that I don't love to read 1 John 4.10. Say, I'm hearing it. Herein is love. Not that we love God. You ever hear people talking about how I love God? That never impresses me very much. But when I get to reading about how he loves me, it impresses me very much. You ever hear people talking about how I serve God? That never impresses me very much. What impresses me is when God gets to talking about how he serves me. Amen? You ever hear people talk about how I follow God? That never impresses me very much. What impresses me is to find out how God's been following me all the time. Amen? You ever hear people talking about, I want to get close to God? That don't impress me very much. It impresses me a lot when I find out how God's been trying to get close to me all the time. You ever hear talking, people talking about, I've got, I really believe in God. Oh, my faith is strong. I believe in God. That don't impress me very much. It impresses me a lot when I begin to read about how much God believes in me. You ever hear people talking about, I've got faith in God? Yeah, terrific. But it makes me more impressed when I hear the word of God tell me, God's got faith in me. That lifts me. That gives me dignity. That gives me purpose. That gives me life. That's a dynamo. That's a dynamic in my life. Love is the dynamic that makes me tick. If God loved me, I can love people. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Love never quits. Say, love never quits. The world around us is living and existing in loneliness and fear and insecurity because they have never discovered the dynamic of God's love in a human person. Did you know that? You and I are the messengers sent before the face of the Lord to prepare the way to them so Jesus can enter their lives and be king and priest and friend. That's how the gospel began. That's how the gospel continues. You and me, believers, network, going, telling, sharing, talking, touching, healing, blessing. This is a powerful sermon. I'm doing wonderful preaching. Anywhere else in the world, it would be bringing the roof down. But I know you, you're America, and I love you. It's wonderful. The gospel began like this. We're continuing it like this. Loneliness. Did you know they tell us more people commit suicide because of loneliness than any other thing? People in our city, living alone, little places, dying, there's nobody. People in old folks' homes, in rest homes, in hospitals, nobody to talk to them. Do you know we're social beings? We need a touch. We need a visit. That's why the Word became flesh. That's how the gospel began. God coming to us, sending a messenger say, out to say, hey, just believe on him. He's coming through town. You can have him. And it continues that way. Gospel of reconciliation to God. We have the greatest message in the world. People that are dying of loneliness. And many of them in our city will take their own lives, will take a... a, a a pistol, stick it to their head, blow their brains out because nobody contacts them. Friends have forsaken them. Neighbors never come around. They can die. And nobody cares. 
I don't remember, was it Solzhenitsyn? I don't think I said that just right, but you know who I mean. That great Russian author who said, no, it wasn't him, it was the, it was the psychologist <clears throat> who was the one that was in the concentration camp. Yeah, Frank, Frankel said, talked about the horrors of the concentration camps and the terror of them. But he said the worst of all was when they brainwashed you and told you nobody cared. As a social creature, it's the awfulest, loneliest feeling in the world to be unloved. Love is the dynamic of the gospel that gives us the vigor and the energy to change our world. Wow. Oh, I want the love of God shed abroad in my heart by the power of the Holy Ghost so that I am a born, living, pulsating organism of love in action. Touching, talking, witnessing, telling, healing, lifting. Oh, you say, I would if I could do all those good things. Oh, but that's where the idea is wrong. When you tell about Jesus, you know what? Even if you don't tell about him, if you tell about you and him in you and be a friend, and be a helper and be concerned. That is Jesus. Isn't it funny in our day, if you say Jesus, they can make it a curse word or hold it in contempt. But let me encourage you, you are Jesus in the flesh. Did that get through? So if you don't want to mention him, Mention you. Oh, I know I'll get cut down for that. Slice that out of a sermon. But the idea is you be Jesus in action, loving, healing, blessing people. Jesus was a Jew. You're an okay. Who cares about who's Jew or okay? What we want is the living, pulsating life of Jesus in me, in you. Hallelujah. Contagious. Glory to God. And around the world it's happened. The little leper in Bangkok, her hands all drawn up, her back humped over, scared to get near the crowd, lived in a hovel by the canal ventured into the crowd to hear the gospel, never heard it in her life, a Buddhist monarch, monarchy. There she was. She came. No one would chase her away. They didn't know she was there. She heard the gospel. She believed on this Jesus. It was so strange. It was so new, but it sounded so good. It made her cry. And when she cried, she was healed. How? I don't know. Don't give me credit. I didn't know she was there. Our message is to prepare the way for the healer. Yeah, he lives in us. When we touch, he touches. I look at my hands. A lot of times I say, believers, get them out and look at them. Ain't it terrific? You got two of them. He said you can lay them on people and heal them because he's in you. I think it's the most terrific thing to be the embodiment of Jesus Christ, of the life of God, of the gospel in flesh. I'm a healer. I'm a healer. You're a healer. Hurting world, ministering love in a hurting world. Love, the dynamic. It starts with peace. And then as you come into it and settle down, you discover, wow, what power. But the power is love. She came. She was healed. She was made whole. I can't explain it, but she was healed. When she was healed, 
She had the courage to come through the crowd. She came up on the platform. The people were aghast. There she was, well, said, looking at my hands. We didn't know how they were before, but then she showed us. And I've seen so many lepers like that. That's one of the processes. Before the fingers start dropping off, they'll kind of draw up and they'll turn like that. You'll see them at different stages. You'll see lepers got two, three fingers left. They'll be drawn up like that. They'll be doubled down. Hers was all like that. She couldn't move them, but she was healed. Life came into them. This love has life. Hallelujah. She was well. Her back was stiff already. She couldn't bend. She wasn't flexible. Here she was up on the platform doing her bend overs, showing the people and rejoicing and crying and all the people happy. Her nose had nodules. Her ears had nodules under the skin and it was dead. Now it had life. She was happy. Oh, the people rejoiced. The Buddhists could see God at work preaching the gospel of the kingdom, demonstrating the gospel of the kingdom. I didn't do it. The big man did it. The Jesus did it. The healer did it. The Christ did it. The Lord did it. The life of God did it. And he's doing it tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love Gospel fest of gospel dynamics. Peace and love. Love power. And as she started to leave, after we'd all rejoiced, she turned back as though she just had this thought, so cheerful, so sweet, saying, oh, and now I have a friend. He won't be ashamed to come to my place. He will live with me. She was down by the canal, a few pieces of tin piled up there, cardboard boxes, a little hovel that she lived in. Now, this king of kings would move into that little hovel by the canal and set up his throne. Love, power, glory to God. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us like we are. That beautiful young lady that had been a prostitute in Akuru. I'll never forget her face. Dr. Whitaker was there. Senator Young was there. <clears throat> she fell down on her knees when she came up to testify. Crying, grabbed my hands, held them there. She just sat there on her knees sobbing. I tried to get her up. She just pulled my hands, stay there. She says, I didn't know he would love me. I didn't know he would love me. I didn't know I could be saved. Overcome. Nobody had told her God loved her like she is. Listen, that's not an old message. Don't hear it and make a cliche out of it. No, it's the dynamic. It's the vigor, the energy of ever Christian is to discover God's love power. Oh, hallelujah. You believe in it? He comes to you tonight. I got a whole bunch more dynamics. Someday I'll preach them to you. I got them. They're already there. The Bible's full of them. Name them. Preach on them. Go for it. Hallelujah. Next time I preach, I'll probably give you some more. Hallelujah. Yeah, because I'm sure not through. I got so much stuff in there and in here. But how can you rush love? How can you rush peace? Some way, you got to talk about it till the nickel drops. Look at Lorraine. It took her all these years. And then Schombach yelling his head off like me tonight. I don't know why we yell so loud, but we do. We feel so good about it. <laughs> but the nickel finally dropped. God didn't save me for my children. He saved me for me. And that means for her first time, Lorraine became an important agency of God's kingdom on earth. Her house becomes a headquarters for love.
God didn't just go through her and use her to get to somebody else. It's amazing what Christians in the church believe secretly. And they look at you with wonder eyes. When you talk about some of these basics, the nickel hasn't dropped. It don't mean they're not saved. It just means it's revelation. We go on from revelation to revelation. And I tell you, these dynamics are all revelations. The greatest one that can ever happen to anybody on earth is to know through the blood of Jesus, all is well with my soul. I tell you, when that happens, you are a new person. And then to discover the thing that makes this whole Christian life tick is the unmerited love of God. Loving people like they are. Nobody bad in his eyes. Nobody. He's paid for all the bad ones too. It's never dawned on the doctrinaires of the church that Jesus paid for the sins of everybody, even who has not repented. They're paid for too. So we don't need to run around and hammer their heads in and tell them how bad they are. They're bought, they're bought and paid for. We need to tell them they're paid for. What does that mean? How do you say that in a word? They're loved. They're loved. They're valued. They're cared for. They're believed in. They're trusted. That's our message. That's how the gospel began. Send the messenger, tell that, get people ready for Jesus. That's how the gospel continues in me. I'm a messenger telling people, get ready for Jesus. Hallelujah. I've told you, I'm a messenger. I've come across your path. Hallelujah. He is coming in this building tonight to walk down these aisles. Glory to God to come to you wherever you are and put his hand on you and say, I love you. Just like you are. You and me can be friends. I've justified you. Will you accept it? Will you trust me that I did enough to pay for your sins? I love you like you are. Gospel fest of gospel dynamics. Hallelujah. 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 You believe it? Amen. With all your heart, say, I believe it. Amen. I'll never forget that guy in one of our meetings that had been a trader. He had come to that country so wicked, come from another country, set up shop, did a good business, but he never married, and he was very abusive and constantly got little girls, little village girls, and abused them and used them and spent his life like that, became a rich man. But, and, and all of this terrible, foul life of his. And then, along in his 40s, he was stricken with a paralytic stroke, drinking, high blood pressure, and some gaskets blew, and that was the end of one side of him. Left him paralyzed. In a few weeks, the side of his face hung down, all twisted. One arm twisted and finally became stiff. After a while, they'll harden and become stiff. One foot dragging it along all the time, like that. The poor old fella, just a middle-aged man, but like an old, worn-out, leftover the wages of sin, you know, uh, the, the abuse of life, seed time and harvest, that's what it is, it, you know. And he came out there on the grounds and heard us preaching about Jesus, and it overpowered him. He never dreamed of a God like this. He'd come from Syria. He never knew that God could love him. His life haunted him, especially since his sickness. And guilt was on him day and night, reflecting on the evil of his life. And he was crooked in his business, crooked with his money dealings, and abusive to people. And he was in shame now. But he came out there in the dark and stood out there. I'll tell you, I know so many stories like this. That's why when I stand up and talk about the love of Jesus, I'll tell you, there's no qualifications on his love. He sees in every human person on earth the potential of being beautiful. If he can just get them to embrace him. 
An old guy stood out there, heard the message, believed it, believed it. Only believe. Don't do anything else but believe. Just believe. Only believe. Believe only. And he did. And my wonderful Lord came to him and saved him and healed him. If I had been God, I wouldn't have. I'd have killed him. Wouldn't you? Doing all that mean things? Get rid of him. Get rid of the trash. I know, thank God I'm not God. And really I don't feel that way, but you know what I'm saying? But God never, never weighs our past against us. How can he? See, we're the only ones that do that. How can God weigh your past against you when he has already paid for your past? Did he put your sins away? Well, if he put them away, can he remember them? Now, we think that's only for people who get saved. We forget that's for sinners. We keep records. We are the judges. We say, bless God, he deserves to die. Look at him in the mess he's in because God struck him down. See, that's oblivion to the gospel. According to the gospel, all of that person's sins were paid for. So God is not striking them down. They have sown seeds and producing their own contrary negative harvest. It's not God that's beating them down. God, I'm talking about since Calvary. A big difference, you know, since Calvary. I do believe there's a difference. Say, I believe there's a difference. Since Calvary. I believe there's a difference. He bore our sins of the whole world. Are you hearing me? Everybody's. When he put them away, where did he put them? Did he keep them on the record? No. We talk about when people get saved, God sends an angel to wipe their record. No, that's not gospel. That's not gospel. That's superstition. Oh, it's a nice thought. We wouldn't want to condemn it. It's a nice thought to bring to people. But the fact is, when Jesus died and was buried, came back to life, ascended to the Father, took his blood in the holy place, and the new covenant was set in order, all the sins of the world were put away forever. Now, we go tell that. And all you got to do to be saved is believe that. And you walk right in. Nothing against you. It wasn't against you before. It's put away. Do you believe that? Yes. That's my message of good news. Love did that. That's a dynamic of the gospel. Uh, that's, the, that's the energy, the energizing power of the gospel. It's for you tonight. Every one of you. You want it? You want to identify with it? You can have it. It's easy. That old Syrian was healed. Standing out there in the crowd, I'll never know why or how. Yes, I know now, but I mean, I, mar I should say I'll always marvel at the love of God that reached him. But it reached me. Does God number our sins? He's got a little sin. That guy's got that? No. Is it a headache or a cancer? No. It's the love of God. It's the healing virtue of God. It's the life of God. It's the dynamo of God. Hallelujah. I'll never forget him. Muslim background. Muslims believe in God. They rever God. He came to the platform. He stood there, weeping, 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 raising that arm, wiggling them fingers, put them down, raise his foot and kick it. Stood there, I'll tell you, you couldn't stop him. He'd say, and he'd yell, look, look. Well, anyone can do that, but he couldn't before. Look. And he'd, he'd kick his foot, and it was, 
just so nimble and free. He'd raise it up, say, look, I couldn't do that before. And he cried and he cried. And then he bellowed out these words. He said, people, now I see God. Wow. Friends, love did that. God is love. The dynamic of the gospel. You can't measure it. I had a bunch of good stuff I'd like to read to you. Who can separate us from it? It's him that defends us. Nobody can take it away from us. Nobody can say we're not in it. The door's open. He's here and he comes to you. I urge you, if you've not discovered this love, this love of God, tonight's your night. You ready? You ready? In the name of Jesus, may God bless you as you accept, embrace it. I pray for you. Write and tell us what this has done for you.